Okay, right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we have our next session, which is security announcements and updates. And I've been joined by Ben. Hi, good morning, Caroline. Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning. Um, so, shall I just hand over to you? You can give us a nice little bit of an update as to who, what, where, when, why we're going down the path that we're going. And we have a very patient Chris hanging on the session to show us a little bit more. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Caroline. So um, I just want to take a couple of minutes, um, not too much more than that, because I definitely want to leave it to the experts. But um, we have um, recently been uh, got engaged to um, Centripetal um, and security is important to us. Now, as a SaaS provider, where for a number of our customers, we obviously manage your uh, data and our ISO 27001 accreditations. Um, we're constantly looking at how we improve our security portfolio um, in order to you know, protect that data, protect your interests and, and clearly ours. So um, we started talking to Centripetal initially as a kind of like a customer opportunity. <laughs> and what Centripetal offer is, is effectively what's called a, cl a clean internet service. So it's a complementary security product that is, um, helps with threat intelligence and detection. Um, and we were seriously impressed in, with, with this solution and have implemented it now. So what we um, have started to talk to uh, Connor um, and his team, and Chris is part of that team, is about actually becoming a partner to bring this to um, the market and support our customers because we feel there's a huge value to this. Um, I think you're going to, um, even if it's not your sort of particular area, um, I think you'll understand what Chris is going to be talking about. I think you'll see the kind of potential threats to your organizations and in turn your customers. Um, and I think that, you know, this should be something that as a follow up, it would be really great to sort of maybe start um, talking to some of your CCOs, your data protection officers, your IT security teams, um, so that, again, we can have a discussion around how this might be able to assist you and, and better protect against the, you know, the cyber security risks that are out there. So on that note, I'm going to pass over to Chris. Um, so Chris is one of the engineers at technical uh, engineering team and uh, is very, very knowledgeable about this subject. So um, good morning, Chris. Good morning. Hi, uh, everyone. Okay, if you can see on the screen, uh, that means I've done the first part of my uh, job right this morning. You've so, passed. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm sorry? You passed, Chris. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thanks, Ben, for the introduction. So, to give you a br very brief overview of, of why I'm here and what I'm talking about today, uh, starting with Centripetal as a company, I am based in Galway, Ireland, uh, along with Conor O'Brien and Adele and our larger team who join this webinar today. Uh, and we are the EMEA expansion of uh, an American founded company that goes back 14 years and has roots in the intelligence community coming from the Air Force, as well as uh, some of the secret agencies, if you will, on the on the American side. We've now founded uh, the organization here. We're up and running about a year and we're expanding and we offer primarily a product that we call clean Internet. And as Ben said there, our goal is to provide you with exactly that. So to explain what clean internet is, we've come up with a series of experiments that we've run that try to put the human element uh, to, to the challenges that businesses face every day. So at a high level, what is clean internet? Clean internet is a managed service that Centripetal provides to protect a company's infrastructure from inbound and outbound threats. How we deploy that is not very important to get into right now, but for those of you in the audience who understand and are interested, we use threat intelligence, uh, threat intelligence um, consuming technology, and, and that's how we take care of that. So the experiments that we've run focus on four, uh, four key areas, and these relate to threats that an organization would see today. So we've got reconnaissance, uh, malicious web browsing, malware infections, and then advanced threat detection. How can we know the threat before it arrives? So we'll start with reconnaissance uh, and something that we've done there. So before we begin, we can agree on some of the key points. Networks are continuously bombarded by reconnaissance traffic. Even legit legitimate scanning services, the likes of Shodan, 
uh, who attempt to show vulnerabilities within your network for good can be used by malicious actors. Reconnaissance's main goal, uh, or reconnaissance attempts main goals are to find what machines are open and what can be exploited. What can we steal? What can we invade? You know, how far into the network can we get? The traffic is generally of no value, meaning that it's overwhelming edge defenses, firewalls, IDS systems, it's costing money in log storage and so on. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, we unburden the network infrastructure by placing our service in front of the edge of the network. The end result is that there's less noise to the firewalls, less noise to downstream tools, IDS, IPS systems. There's less logs generated, which means lower costs to the likes of Splunk or other SIM technologies. And additionally, because we're blocking those recon attempts, we're seeing that listing on search engine engines like Shodan uh, become no longer and you remain more anonymous than before. So how we proved this was we set up an experiment in AWS and we used two publicly available uh, honeypot systems. Now these are designed to attract as much bad traffic as, as they can. So we stood up two of these honeypots, honeypot A and honeypot B, one of which was protected by our service and the other was left open to the public. We tried to be as fair as possible during the experiment. So we measured over the same time in the same region and set everything up to the same conditions. And so I'll play the first video. And what you're seeing here is over a 30 second period, how many attack attempts or reconnaissance attempts are being made against this machine. This is just over 30 seconds. And this is very shortly after launching the device. So we see that the minute the device comes online, this could be a web server of yours, an email server, could be any piece of infrastructure you rely on for business. It's immediately being flooded from all over the world with attempts to get inside. We then have, um, get to the next slide there, the same thing over the same period of time, but now sitting behind clean internet. And I make jokes at this point about the silence and how to fill it. But the reality is this is impactful in the way that you're no longer seeing this traffic. You're, you're focusing on what your business has to do, whatever line of business you're in, your analysts, your engineers, your IT sysadmin, whether one or a hundred, no longer have to be filtering out this noise to figure out at what point your network is really under threat. So a basic summary of that experiment, we saw 400,000 security events registered against the exposed machine, and that's reduced to just 200 in the case of the protected instance. And to give a real world example, an engineer or a team of engineers sitting and trying to search query 400,000 events is no small task. You have to start to get really creative. There's a very good chance that you can miss something very important within. When we then look at 200 events, I think it's fair to say that over the morning coffee, you can stroll through them one by one and pay a greater deal of attention. So. In summary, some of our findings or some of our comments on this are that firewall, firewalls can't be updated at this speed. The way that our circular service works is that we see threats. We know the market, we know the data, we feed those back into our protection layer in advance of them becoming issues. A firewall responds by, here's a threat, I'd better block this. It's not scalable to modern business. And the only adaptive real-time threat intelligence uh, defense systems offer this uh, this level of protection. So we'll skip ahead now to malicious websites. Another common problem for the everyday business and the everyday consumer. Here is an example that a colleague of mine put together of a fake ad seen on Facebook. And as you can see, it looks as though they are representing themselves as Helly Hansen and so my colleague in this case clicked the ad thinking nothing of it and was blocked. Now, the speed at which clean internet can pick up on these threats is very different to technologies that you may be familiar with in this domain. 
These websites are often spun up and torn down a long time before web filters can, can catch up. The goal is to extract your money from you as quickly as possible by offering you a discount on merchandise that they believe that you like. They take your payment and the goods never materialize. The website is quickly shut down again a few hours later before, um, before threat feeds can be updated typically. And so what we see on the clean internet side, on the centripetal side of that particular event, is we see the internal IP address of who requested the website, what website was requested, or what, uh, what triggered our defense, and which feed we were using. Now we talk about the threat intelligence feeds we have. We actually consume from 250 threat intelligence providers across the world, several thousand uh, threat intelligence feeds. So in this case, we can see that the Sophos malware high confidence feed was triggered and that resulted in a dropped connection to the website. So reviewing as well, the common reputational score of that website in question, we find in the screenshot given, and there are far more green ticks here than red, that speed and speed is of the essence here. Now, Centripetal's clean internet service needs just one flag from one provider, and that flag can be added by us to determine something to be unsafe and take immediate action. So it's imperative that, uh, that we're consuming the latest, freshest data as quickly as possible. So moving forward from the web browsing example, we'll go to malware infections which present a significant risk to any business and an experiment that we devised once again to attempt to show the real interactions that an end user may have with malware, the impact that may have on the business and what we can do to stop it. So for this experiment, a lot of noise on the screen there, I know. What we aimed to do was create something that looked a bit like what you'd expect a bank statement uh, to arrive as over email. So as you can see here, tools used by some of our analysts were, uh, it, were employed to develop uh, an executable file that runs on your computer, but is masked as a bank statement. So as we go to the next slide, we see that much, much like anything we've already seen uh, in our own lives, uh, first regional bank here, a bank that we, we designed, We've all received these emails and it's surprising the number of times that people click on the links, download the files and run them. The knock on headache for the sysadmins and the risk to the business is significant. So we'll show you here what actions we will take as we see a piece of software try to come through the network, try to call home and what will happen. So here we have the bank's website uh, that has generated a bank statement, sent it by email. We've, for the purposes of the experiment, run a virtual machine, but in your case, it would be a real computer. We've downloaded the file and we've clicked go. And what's happened in advance of showing you a video playthrough is that once a piece of malware is downloaded, it will then communicate back with its command and control center. That could be anywhere in the world. It could be reasonably anonymous and it's ultimately controlled with the intent of causing harm. So that could be anything from Bitcoin mining to data exfiltration to simply eavesdropping on your network. But we must stop the connection to the command and control centers, rendering any malware in the network inert and harmless. So here's a video that will play. It is now playing. This represents the, the average person, the normal folk opening their email, receiving this email, doing as the email asks them to do and download the file ignoring safely as they do the warnings from their computer about the harm that file could uh, bring now we see there the word logo on that bank statement that's been actually replaced within the executable there you go before i could even speak he's opened it nothing's happened so at this point the user is unaware of the damage that they have potentially just caused to the network. They just think potentially the computer's broken. They can't open the file they were looking for. 
maybe move on to lunchtime and deal with it later. Meanwhile, in the background, Clean Internet has seen the malware file be pulled through. It hasn't been blocked because we don't know the, the origin. We don't, we don't know what it's doing. So what we've done is we've allowed it through. We know that we can render it helpless and we've scanned it on the way in so that we can determine later what action to take with it. And we see that immediately, less than one minute after download, it's trying to call its command and control centers one after the other and get a connection home so it can receive instructions on what harm to cause. Now, in this case, Clean Internet monitored the first event, the malware download, but blocked subsequent attempts to communicate with command and control centers. So this file now sits in the network, is completely inert. Everyone involved has been uh, notified. We will then speak to either directly or through a partner, the customer, and suggest what has happened here and, and what action they can take uh, to remediate, to remove that piece of malware, though it is uh, harmless at that point. So we'll then go forward to the final section, which is talking about advanced threat detection. It expands on the examples that we've had here. Why it's important really is for many years now, we've lived in a very reactionary state. I think we can all agree in terms of IT security, we allow the problem to happen and then it keeps us awake at night at Centripetal. We believe we've changed that and we've implemented technology that is proactive in its defense mechanisms. The idea being primarily that at nighttime, when something tries to happen within or outside into your network, we can block that threat before it happens, call you the next day, let you have a nice sleep and say, by the way, this happened last night, nothing to worry about. Here's the remediation uh, that you should employ internally to make sure that that doesn't happen again. But we had the threat neutralized before entry. So as we go through, we see once again, a, a slide summarizing the, the, excuse me, the steps that were taken to send that piece of malware through to our machine. If you remember from the last example, this slide shows you basically how the technology works and what we're looking for. So the first thing is to monitor and log the event. We scan every packet that comes through the clean internet service. We scan the, the header of each packet. We can then make the decision uh, based on information available to us, whether we will decrypt the packet, expand the packet, or even uh, decrypt files, which we can also do. The way that works is the file is copied, sent to a sub processor, then its contents are decrypted, usually within a few seconds, but not at line speed for file decryption. What the end result is, we know the full contents of that file. We understand if it's harmful, then we can alert the intrusion detection system that something needs to be paid attention there uh, to. We then can inform the customer of what has happened there. So then for many of our partners, that would be an opportunity for um, additional revenue or just to be the trusted advisor to their own clients. So looking at the IDF signatures and what we see there, we see that we downloaded an executable file. We flagged it as suspicious and then a policy fired uh, to, to uh, a policy fired knowing what that was. So in summary, uh, and this was a, I think, high level, plain language overview of what we do. If there's anyone that doesn't understand, I'm sure we can, uh, we can link up afterwards, but clean internet blocks unwanted reconnaissance traffic, stops uh, malicious network traffic in both directions, neutralizes malicious downloads. That's anything from your Bitcoin mining, your spyware, your eavesdropping software, which extends as far as smart kettles with microphones in them, all of that. And then we automatically and proactively, I like to say, identify and neutralize advanced threats as they're coming through. So I rushed through that. I'm conscious of uh, any questions that may have may have arisen, but that's uh, that's the end. Thank you, Chris. Um, that that was really great, and um, 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just a, an introductory kind of session for, for everyone on the webinar. And I think, you know, certainly from our perspective, when we were engaging with, with Centripetal, what really stood out was the, the kind of pedigree of, of the organization, but the, the, the money spent on the R&D process, $200 million, you know, a hun over 100 families of patents. Um, you know, this is a well-established, well-proven technology. Um, and certainly, you know, we've, we've been through lots of different sessions and I really love the interactive kind of demo of, of how it works in the real world. So um, hopefully everyone found that useful. Um, Chris, thank you very much. Caroline, was there any questions that came through as we were going along? Um, no, some uh, some positive statements, but no questions as such. There is a couple of things I'd like to ask. However, Ben, could you also turn your video on? It's... Oh, sorry. Um, I think there was just one question from Chris, actually, that just yeah. popped up on my screen, but it's disappeared. Yeah. Okay, your video seems to not want to stay on, so it's poor, poor Chris, it's disconcerting, he's staring politely at a uh, tiger online. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm pressing, the button. I'm pressing the button and it's telling me it can't stay on, so we okay, might have to worry. We can't help with that, but for everything else, there's clean internet. At the risk of that, I'll, I'll come on, just so that you don't feel all lonely. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. We should help there. Um, so, yeah, so you've got the question from Chris. Do you want to pose that one then? Uh, no, sorry, Caroline. It popped up on screen and it disappeared. So um, okay. you might have to uh, okay. find it. So Chris, Chris has asked, sorry, here we go. How does the system deal with false positives or is that less of a problem with this technology? That's a great question. And the answer is very simple. We build each clean internet deployment uniquely to each customer and their businesses needs. So false positives wouldn't be something that we would see. We will aim to monitor for a period of time before implementing the solution. And we'll work one-to-one -one, week by week for four weeks to ensure that we understand your business uh, exactly before we make any call on block. But we are blocking harmful and malicious, known harmful and malicious threats rather than this to Google Drive and, and the things that you use every day. I Interesting. The question. Yeah. Um, I know we've had this a couple of times with our own stuff and in customer interactions we've had so far and putting you on the spot slightly, Chris. In terms of firewalls, people say we've got really great connection with our firewall, we've got that lockdown, we've got lots of rules against it. What's the kind of combative side as to do, do we even need you at this point? That's another great question. And I would say, especially targeted towards the people who have made a large uh, investment in time and money in the, their existing firewall technology. It's been a good investment. It mm -hmm. has been very good technology. The firewall was primarily designed to block everything and allow in what was necessary for for business. And over time, we've seen the evolution of next generation firewalls that have attempted to bring in threat intelligence feeds and do some of the same work. But I would say that the speed and scale at which the clean internet service can operate does far exceed by a factor of a thousand times uh, many of the most popular firewall brands on the market. We're a completely different system. We're a, we're a level above. But additionally, this lives in front of your firewall and augments uh, the good work that it is already doing, the routing and switching and so on. All right, fabulous. Thank you. Now, I've certainly impressed myself on what we've seen so far, Chris. So, yeah. like, so I've just got yeah. one, one other question, Cara. So, yeah. so Chris, um, I think, you know, from um, a leadership team's perspective, um, you know, clearly security is, is a boardroom level kind of conversation. And um, you know, some of the, the uh, data leaks and um, exposures that have happened recently, you know, they're all over the press. Um, can you maybe just comment on, um, you know, what kind of risk is there to an organization at the point that they have had some form of, of cybersecurity incident and, and what's the kind of exposure they might face? Absolutely. There are, there are a number of considerations and I, Fortunately, uh, I'm in a position to be able to comment on many media stories relating to exactly the same. And one of the overarching points is that you as a business, you're entrusted with the care of your customer's data. Whatever it is that you sell or do or provide, you are entrusted with keeping your information safe. And depending on what type of product or service you sell, that can be a lot of information. 
It can be information about income, exactly where you live, relationships that you may have. And that information then in the hands of a skilled uh, criminal is very dangerous information. So when you face a breach, yes, there's the, the real legal issues there, but there's the, the questions from the customers. Do I trust your brand anymore? Do I want to continue to furnish you with information that you will so carelessly lose? That's the, that's the real opinion from the people on the street these days. If that answers your question, uh, Ben. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. So that's fantastic. So um, just want to thank you, obviously, for supporting us today and, and getting the, or beginning to get the message across to, to our customers and partners. And, you know, hopefully there'll be some follow up discussions that we can have. Thank you.